In the never-ending quest for viable organs, medical professions work to provide for the demand. Unfortunately, this is leading to new harvesting methods which are increasingly controversial and ethically problematic. The most difficult organ to transplant and the only one which cannot be provided by a living donor is the heart. To increase heart donation, transplant centers around the country are removing organ donors from life support, clamping off circulation to their brains, and resuscitating their hearts and other organs. This procedure, known as Normal Thermic Regional Perfusion, or NRP, allows for organ harvesting in patients who are not brain dead but are not expected to survive. The patient is removed from life support, their heart stops beating, and doctors wait at least 120 seconds before beginning surgery. They start by clamping off blood flow to the patient's brain, intentionally inducing brain death. And then they resuscitate the remaining organs to continue the harvest. Dr. Wes Ely, a critical care physician and transplant pulmonologist at Vanderbilt University, said in relation to this practice, we're so hungry for organs right now that we are pushing all the limits. I just want us to be super cautious. We need to press the pause button on this and have some more conversations so that we can stay in the right lane. The dignity of the human who donates the organs should never be sacrificed. I'm Dr. Heidi Klessig, a retired anesthesiologist and pain management specialist and the author of The Brain Death Fallacy. NRP is currently one of the hottest topics in transplant bioethics. The American Journal of Bioethics devoted their June 2024 issue to the topic, and the American College of Physicians, the largest medical specialty society in the world, called for the practice to be paused back in 2021. Yet it continues. Before discussing NRP, a discussion of the dead donor rule is relevant. The dead donor rule is a worldwide ethical standard which states donors cannot be made dead in order to obtain their organs, and organ retrieval cannot cause death. The practice of NRP blatantly disregards the standard and disrespects the lives of the organ donors as well as the conscience rights of the recipients who are not informed that their organ came from someone who is not yet biologically dead. In order to understand NRP, I'm going to briefly review donation after circulatory death. I have a longer video on DCD on my channel if you want more information. So first, here's how donation after circulatory death, or DCD, works. First, these patients are not brain dead, but are either not expected to survive or have decided that their quality of life is unacceptable. Second, their death is planned to occur at a specific place and time so that organs can be harvested. Third, the patient is taken to the operating room or a room nearby with the transplant team ready to start harvesting as soon as possible. Fourth, medical support is withdrawn and the patient is monitored until their pulse stops. DCD does not require EKG silence, but rather no pulse. And fifth, after a two to five minute period of pulselessness, the objective is achieved and these people are immediately harvested. That is the process of circulatory death donation, but if fragile organs like the heart or intestines are to be harvested, this is where NRP comes in. Some form of NRP is already being performed by half of the organ procurement organizations in the United States, with more expressing interest in joining them. This protocol, as an example, comes from the University of Nebraska. Step one opening the chest through a standard method used for heart and lung procurement. Step two, tying off all the blood vessels that supply blood to the brain to ensure that blood flow to the brain is not reestablished once circulation is restarted. Step three, catheters are inserted into the aorta and the right atrium, as is done for cardiac surgical procedures to prepare for machine circulation and oxygenation of the blood. Step four, initiation of cardiopulmonary bypass, which will reestablish the flow of blood to all organs of the body, including the heart. The initial step for tying off the blood vessels to the head is necessary to ensure that blood flow to the brain does not occur. Step five, once blood flow is reestablished, the heart will start beating again, allowing doctors to assess its viability for transplant.
The Uniform Determination of Death Act, or UDDA, states that death occurs after the irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory function. But with NRP, your heart starts beating again in your own chest. Obviously, your heart has not irreversibly stopped beating. This procedure is playing fast and loose with the definitions of death under the UDDA. The only reason the patient with a beating heart is now dead is that we have made them brain dead on purpose in a previous step. This is medical legal sleight of hand. The American College of Physicians has recommended the practice of NRP be paused as the burden of proof regarding the ethical and legal propriety of this practice has not been met. They had four reasons. One, it violates the dead donor rule. Remember, this says we can't kill patients for their organs. Number two, it disproportionately affects substance abuse victims. Circulatory death donation is more common among overdose death donors, as opposed to other causes like trauma. We need to be careful not to jump to harvest socially undervalued people for our own convenience. Third, the lack of transparency can damage trust in healthcare and clinical research. How many people would consent to this if they knew what was happening behind the operating room doors? Not informing people because they might object is dishonest and manipulative. And number four, organs can potentially be resuscitated outside the body, and this research should be pursued. The technology to keep organs viable outside of their donor's body exists, but isn't successful enough to be standard practice. This should be pursued and funded instead of ethically questionable techniques such as NRP. NRP is already banned in Australia and has been paused in the United Kingdom for ethical reevaluation. The United States, on the other hand, continues to expand their use of NRP, despite fierce debate about the ethics of this practice and heavy critiques from bioethicists. Dr. Matthew DeCamp, MD, PhD bioethicist at the University of Colorado says of NRP, restarting circulation reverses what was just declared to be the irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory function. It is no defense to suggest that the patient was already dead when the action negates the conditions upon which the determination was made. Dr. Loris Kaljan, the director of the Bioethics and Humanities Program at the Iowa Carver College of Medicine agrees, NRP represents a technologically elaborate attempt to refashion definitions for death to maximize the number and quality of transplanted organs. It both depends on and violates the circulatory definition of death and arguably employs iatrogenic or intentionally induced brain death. It is very clear that NRP breaks multiple ethical and legal standards and patients are not being adequately informed about what it entails. David Magnus, doctor of biomedical ethics at Stanford School of Medicine put it plainly, a quick rule of thumb in bioethics should be that relying on not telling people what you are doing or attempting to obfuscate with misleading language is a pretty good indication that you are on the wrong track. While some NRP advocates want transparency and complete disclosure, too many leaders in professional organizations have pushed for obfuscation. This is at minimum a red flag for NRP. Personally, I believe that NRP is a concealed form of physician-assisted death and should be banned. In our zeal to provide more viable organs, we are ignoring the respect due to the humanity of these donors, treating them as commodities, and forgetting that our role as physicians is to heal, not harm.